This is Ed coming to you from Australia, also known as The Future. Hello to everyone who's seen me for the first time and hello and welcome back to all of my wonderful subscribers. So today I'm going to go through a list of those dodgy dealers who were doing dastardly deeds for Donald, in particular the ones from January 6. I saw an article today and uh, it's dated, well today is July 4th in Australia, but you'll probably see this either July, probably July 5th or thereabouts. And it's an article by Salon. It's written by Ariba Shah just from a few hours ago. And it's called Leaked Details of Rudy Giuliani Interviews Suggest Jack Smith Targeting Trump Lawyers. Now, last week, I promised that I was going to be looking at some of these Trump lawyers. I'm going to go, I'm going to use the basis of this article to pick the names. And the people that I've picked out from this article are uh, Rudy Giuliani, Sidney Powell, Emily Newman, Mike Roman and John Eastman. So I'm going to do um, readings on all five of those people today. And I want to take a bit of a condensed look at each of them and see where they stand when it comes to the Jack Smith um, investigation. There is currently a grand jury in place looking at January 6th. And some of these names in particular appear to be at risk. They are the ones that seem to be the focus right now. And it could be that they are being targeted because they were close enough to Donald to be able to flip. In a future video, I will look at some of the other players as well. So let's have a look at the first one, which is Rudy Giuliani. First one out of the gate. I've noticed I look so pale. It's because it's winter here. And um, I probably look particularly pale because you guys are all tanned. Having been outside, you're in the middle of summer. It's absolutely freezing here in Australia. And um, I actually, it just, now that I've got uh, normal colored curtains and a normal colored thing here happening in this room, I actually am this pale. <laughs> but anyway. Um, right, let's have a look here. The first one we're going to look at is Rudy Giuliani. This might be a long video, but you know what? Every now and then, that's okay. If it gets too long, I'll cut it in half or something. So Rudy Giuliani, it's been speculated uh, as recently as today that he is the kind of a person who has probably flipped like crazy because he knows he needs to get in there I mean, he was a lawyer. I don't think he's a lawyer anymore, but he was, or well, at least he can't practice law in D.C. or New York, I think, or Washington State or in New York State or something like that. But um, he knows that he needs to get in before there's any indictments. So I do suspect that he has thrown everybody that he can under the bus in the hopes of being able to save himself somehow. There was this proffer session, the whole queen for a day thing that was being held late last week. And my guess is that he singed like a canary. But you know what? I wasn't there. Let's find out where Rudy stands using the cards. Just because he sings doesn't mean he's going to be let off scot-free. There might just be way too much to use against him. So we have the signifier and the challenge card. Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts. The past. Mm. And then the short term. So the signifier is the eight of wands and it's challenged by the four uh, in reverse and it's challenged by the four of cups. The eight of wands in reverse is about an unexpected difficult event affecting business and family. I'm not surprised that we would have this unexpected difficult event. It's also relevant to consider that you may have blockages here that can't allow you to get what you want. 
So even though there was this queen for a day element, I do suspect from the baseline, because I can see ahead as well, that Rudy had lots of choices to make. He had lots of information that he may or may not have been willing or able to share with Jack's team. But I don't think it's going to get him off scot-free because there's only so far he can go before his actions are stopped by the end of the card. When you have the card upright, you can reach your conclusion here. See the buds at the end? That's your inspiration to act towards those buds or the opportunities that you have, perhaps to be able to get a deal that allows you to stay out of prison. When the card's in reverse, there's something stopping you from getting to the end. And so I do suspect that even though he may have given up as much as he could, multiple amounts, the difficult aspect of the event relating to Rudy is that it's not going to save him entirely. And I think that's what it is. This challenge he had was the emotional challenge of what to do about it and who to give up, what to say, what not to say. And he's made choices. Some of them he would have just blurted out and sung like a canary and others he may have decided to hold back because he knows that it'll just get him in deeper. They, you know, when you're queen for a day in these um, interviews or interrogations or whatever you want to call them, you can't be held responsible for anything you say on the day, but you might say something that has a knock-on effect to something else that could be used against you later. And so I think that was the balance that he had. And that appears here in this baseline. On the, con on the conscious level, we've got justice in reverse. This is the poetic justice. Um, this is about things coming back. Um, there's severe legal issues that can appear in this card as well. And I think Rudy's in a lot of trouble. I first detected in the cards that Rudy was in a lot of trouble two years ago, definitely a year and a half ago, definitely somewhere in the vicinity of January 6th. I remember doing a reading where I was comparing Rudy to someone like uh, Ted Cruz, and then I was looking at Mark Meadows as opposed to someone else. Mark Meadows and Rudy Giuliani both got the real severity um, readings where they were both in a lot of trouble. I'll look at Mark Meadows in a future in a future video. But Rudy, yeah, he's still in a lot of trouble here. And that's his day-to-day -day existence. Actually, I think the walls are really coming. They're not closing in on Rudy anymore. I think they're coming crashing down. He's um, made a lot of very serious mistakes and for some reason was under the impression that he would be untouchable forever. But you know what? The universe always self-corrects. And it doesn't matter what you think you're going to get away with. The universe always self-corrects. And he's in self-correction mode right now. On the subconscious, we've got um, the two of cups. This is about attraction, commitment and love. I actually think this is about the closeness that he had with Donald and the fact that he has a lot to sing about. And these are his choices. You see, they're both from the um, cup suite. This is how close he was to the January 6th issue. And now it's about him um, making choices about pondering his options about just how much he can give away to be able to mitigate the dire situation that he's in that are represented in both of these cards. The, um, in the past, we've got here the Eight of Pentacles in reverse. This is about being um, stuck in a rut, being undervalued, being bored with work and life. And, um, and there's an element of disregard in this card. I actually think that this represents Rudy Giuliani falling out of favor. Do you remember how, you know, he was Donald's attorney and Donald would say, you need to speak to Rudy. He's my attorney. Uh, he would come out and represent Donald on all kinds of things. He would talk a lot of nonsense, but he would come out and he'd be Donald's personal attorney the whole time that Donald was in office, almost. And then suddenly Donald kind of disowned Rudy. And Rudy was talking about this insurance policy that he had against Donald and things like that. I think that's represented here. We have here a prosperity and well-being card with the pentacles. There's the undervalued bit. There's the sort of being stuck in a rut bit. 
there's this shift that took place in the past where Rudy went from sort of feeling as though he had an immunity, which we've seen in lots of different um, cases that he's involved in, lots of different behaviours that he's being accused of. He was acting as though he had this kind of immunity from any kind of scrutiny and then suddenly he fell out of favour with Donald. And uh, I think that the falling out of favour appears here in the past. In the short term, we've got the Queen of Pentacles in reverse and this is about being fixated on luxury goods but also being fixated on your prosperity and well-being but having unrealistic expectations. So the definition is generally to be fixated on luxury goods so this is sort of someone who is materialistic but you know materialism can take different forms you've got the ones that need to be covered in gold and diamonds and then you have the ones that have to have a stash that they hide away you may have people who are real attention seekers and they just don't feel right unless everyone's hovering around them mm -hmm. but then you have this kind of prosperity and well-being which is about even hanging out other people to dry or, you know, letting the bus run them right over in order to save yourself. That could appear here too, except it has unrealistic expectations, which coincides with this. I think he's singing and singing and singing like the brightest little canary ever, but it's still not going to get him entirely out of trouble. So let's keep going. Oh, I'm not going to shuffle. I'm just going to keep going. Okay. So the way he sees himself, the way others see him or the environment in which he sits, hopes and fears, and then the final outcome. Okay. So the way he sees himself is the world in reverse. This is about a mediocre sense of success and happiness. And, um, and yes, so he's going to mitigate the accountability or he's going to mitigate the, um, the degree of prosecution against him, perhaps. So he'll be able to get immunity in some ways by singing against lots of people, but not entirely. And that's why this mediocre success is sitting underneath this harsh judgment. So just as I anticipated when I saw the baseline, the cards so far are co coinciding. The baseline coincides with the conscious thoughts and his sense of self and also his short-term uh, abilities to get what he expects, which is very, very limited. The way he's viewed by others or the environment in which he sits is the five of uh, wands. These are all of the individuals who are scrambling to do a deal. So this is him competing with all of the others. For all we know, we don't know what Jack is hearing from these witnesses. The people who are currently in the immediate orbit, according to that particular article, which is where I've started, is Rudy, Sidney Powell, Emily Newman, Mike Roman, and John Eastman. They might all be targets or subjects, people of interest, and they could all be scrambling to compete with each other to get a deal first. This five of wands is all about that scramble. Can you see that? These people are only thinking for themselves. They're willing to whack the other guy with the wand in order to get their way. And that's in his immediate environment. It's kind of a free for all. So I think we have a really good gist of where Rudy is right now. In hopes and fears, we've got the page of cups. This is about creative insight and um, arrival of a message. It's... Um, there's a there's creative, um, you know, imagine imaginative things to do. You see how this guy is kind of trying to use his imagination to get himself out of a rut that appears right here that's been created in the past. Well, there's a message coming for him, and I think it might be right here. The seven of pentacles in reverse is about unemployment, being let down, uh, being lazy or tardy and lacking skills. The lacking of the skills, you see here, prosperity, prosperity, they're related. He's giving the goods up, but according to the cards, it's not enough to get him completely out of trouble. So I think he's going to be indicted. He probably will be um, 
given immunity, limited immunity in, in some aspects of whatever it is that he's talking about. But I also think he's going to be prosecuted in other ways. And the lazy or tardy element may also be very, very relevant. And that is because it's too late. I think that all of the scramble that everyone's doing at the last minute, yes, I think Jack and his team are going to take what they can from what they're being given. But all of these people are waiting until the last minute. They've been very, um, I don't know, they've been gloating all of this time about how Teflon coated they all are, how they can all get away with pretty much everything. And now that they're coming down to the last scramble, they're all competing for the same immunity. In Rudy's instance, it looks as though it's going to be minimal and that he's going to end up probably uh, being heavily scrutinized and prosecuted, I believe, for much of what he's been involved with. I also think that the prosperity element is going to drop out. So I think Rudy Rudy's in a lot of trouble. I think Rudy is in a lot of trouble. And I think he's going to probably end up losing a lot of what he owns. And he might also lose his freedom as well. So let's move on. So let's have a look at Sydney Powell. This is definitely going to be a multi-video reading. So I'm going to slice it in places and have them air closely together. So you'll see the videos as part one, part two, whatever. I just think it's a good, it's a good week to take a look at these guys. Sydney Powell. Now she's the Kraken lawyer. She was the one who... Um, Oh, was uh, saying that Hugo Chavez, who apparently was dead at the time, had... Oh, the, the, the thing with the Smartmatic machines, gosh, they, in fact, she was the conspiracy theorist that had a theory on everything. A bit of a nut. Even the Fox News people thought she was a nut. Let's just see how she's going to fare in this. I don't know if I think she's currently being considered uh, by the Bar Association to lose her law license as well. So uh, I don't think there's been a decision made on that yet. I, I'm not sure. Oh, let's cut the cards. I nearly didn't, but then I thought, yeah, I will. OK. So we have the signifier. And the challenge card. Conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts, yeah, she's, she's a nut. She's got lots of bad cards. The past, yeah. Oh, and then the short term. Interesting, she may have gotten in with a deal first. I don't know. Let's have a look here. So the signifier is the five of swords in reverse, and it's challenged by the king of pentacles in reverse. The five of swords in reverse is about the conflict, tension, and bullying, and it goes too far. So it goes to the point of even mourning and death. Challenged by the King of Pentacles in reverse. This is the um, greedy, abusive, exploitative, self-gratifying king who hoards everything for himself and will exploit others. I actually think that there's something here about um, Sydney Powell. She's a lawyer and she's, you know, a mature woman. She's not a naive child. But I think there's something here where she was identified as maybe being a nut and was pushed out there and exploited. Maybe mental illness or something was being exploited by this King of Pentacles. That's what it looks like. We have... Um, there was an issue here with her behavior, which seems to be combative to the point of going too far. I, when I'm looking at all of these cards here, I, I think that the issue of mental illness might actually be featuring in the cards. So without being too specific, I think it was identified early by certain people who had negative intentions and utilized um, in a way to exploit it. So that's what I think appears here. Also here on a day to day basis, we have this um, on the day to day. We've got the devil, which is about addiction, codependency and bad habits. 
I actually think that on a day-to-day -day basis, she's never quite getting a grip. I don't think... I don't think she fully will ever cooperate because I don't think she... I don't want to say that she's naive. I don't think she's naive. I think there's there might be a screw loose. Now, I'm only looking at what the cards say. I'm not a, a mental health expert. And so this is strictly opinion based on what I'm reading in the cards. But I've got this weird little crazy mix of cards here that make her look like she's not right in the head. And um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I think we have issues that are appearing every single day. The King of Wands in reverse appears... Uh, in the subconscious. This is about in um, an arrogant sense of inflated ego, misusing power. If you have a person who isn't operating correctly and they also have this, they're inspired to do egotistical negative things that are abusive or ex exploitative or they're being exploited to misuse power, it all appears here in these cards. These are these are some really. Um, I don't want to be too. I don't want to be defamatory, and so I'm trying to be really careful about the way that I'm interpreting this. But these are cards of someone that are is being represented here in the cards as being really not well at all. And I'm not a mental health expert, so I can't really be explicit without tripping over myself. But just. It's just really unhealthy. In the past, we've got the Knight of Wands, and this is about lustful enthusiasm, but it lacks focus and is scatty. So this is, I think, where it was identified and then utilized, knowing that she could be harnessed to take it further than anyone else. Now here in the short term, We've got the Six of Wands, which is sort of about public acknowledgement, victory. And um, and I'm not sure, I don't think it is about being victorious, but let's see what the context is. But there's some kind of satisfaction that appears here or public acknowledgement for her in the short term. Let's just see if we can contextualize it with the bottom cards. So the way she sees herself, the way others see her, the environment in which she sits. Yep. Hopes and fears. Okay, and then the final outcome. Okay, so, you know, I think that we can sum this up with one word. Just do Lely. Do Lely. The way she sees herself is justice in reverse. She feels as though she's being very harshly judged. Okay, for the things that she does. I don't think, according to the card, she actually really... She, if you see her and sit down with her, she appears to be reasonable. What's coming out of her mouth is nonsense. But what's happening in her head is a little bit unfathomable and it's not logic as we understand it it's something entirely different but she feels as though she's being very harshly criticized for what she's done so there might be a complex there some kind of persecution complex or something that's part of a personality disorder see I, i'm i don't want to trip into this area of diagnosing someone i don't know all i know is these are some really crazy cards the way she's viewed by others or the environment in which she sits is the three of pentacles in reverse this is the exploitation by her colleagues so identified as having some kind of an issue that could be exploited and this is the exploitation so there are people around her who have been utilizing what they see in her for their own purposes hopes and fears we've got the two of cups in reverse now, this could be a hope or a fear card. It's a connect disconnect. I actually think this is the crazy rattling brain that kind of a wire is loose. There is a possibility here, according to these cards, that there's a combination of maybe narcissism and a kind of a other personality disorders and other mental illness, all sorts of things all mixed together. And I think that there's a possibility here that she might go downhill. It may become visible that somehow she's going, degenerating or going downhill. The final outcome here is the Five of Pentacles. 
And this is utter destitution. And so this is really about losing everything. It can be uh, poverty in terms of your um, prosperity financially, but it can also be losing your grip um, in terms of health as well. So for Sydney Powell, um, what I'm seeing is really quite disturbing. I feel like uh, I'm kind of rattling a jar of something and I can hear a few dry beans kind of knocking about and then a few of them fall out and that's the end of that. I didn't like that one. That was just really weird. Yeah, she's a weird lady, that one. And the cards seem to think that there's all kinds of things loose in there. Okay, so Emily Newman. I don't really know much about Emily Newman. Let's have a look here. So Emily Newman is a lawyer who collaborated with Sidney Powell. Okay. Let's take a look at Emily Newman. That's a name I'm not really familiar with, but she was a collaborator. If I can get some more information on Emily, I'll, it'll appear up just at the top here somewhere. So we've got the King of Wands, oh sorry, the Signifier, the Challenge card, Conscious Thoughts, Subconscious Thoughts, the Past, and then the Short Term. Okay, so the Signifier is the King of Wands, this is about action inspiration, um, and it's really quite, uh, quite inspiring. Okay, so it's challenged by the Star, which is about futility and... Um, and a lack of clarity and also lack of confidence. I think Emily Newman is going to crack very quickly if there's an opportunity for her to do so. She is very inspired to act and she doesn't have the confidence to be able to fight to the degree that some of them are fighting. So she's not a Steve Bannon and she's not a Roger Stoney kind of character at all. Um, I would say that she is the kind of person who you touch her, she'll flip, that's it. On the day-to-day, -day, we've got the nine of wands in reverse. This is about feeling overwhelmed and wanting to give up. So more evidence of that. And then we've got the lovers. This is the collaboration. So this is working in partnership with Sydney Powell. I think now that everyone's kind of being questioned as a group, according to these cards, what I'm seeing is that Emily would be one of the very first to point the finger at Sydney Powell, most likely. In the past, we've got temperance. This is about lack of cooperation causing chaos. I think this is probably the involvement in the January 6th and that collaboration, but having conflicting ideas. So maybe there was something they didn't quite agree with, uh, her and Sydney Powell. And then in the short term here, we've got that really harsh judgment. So maybe the Jack's team have been applying pressure on, um, on Emily quite strongly. So let's keep going. The way she sees herself, the way others see her or the environment in which she sits, hopes and fears, and then the final outcome. Okay, so you see, these are the options that she has. So it's either me or you, and I think she's going to choose herself. Um, and this is the way that she sees herself as being someone who has to make these difficult decisions about what she's going to do. And if you're feeling overwhelmed, you're probably going to give up the goods. The way she's viewed by others or the environment in which she sits is the Hierophant. This is, um, now you see here you've got this joining together and now you have an expulsion. So she's kind of sitting peripheral to the group. And maybe that's the reason why we haven't heard her name as much as some of the others. So as an insider who's also an outsider, I think maybe the fact that she was a bit of an outsider is where this comes in, where there's a bit of a conflicting idea. Maybe she wasn't willing to go as far as some of the others um, because she seems to be a bit of an outlier. And this going against the grain and, and expulsion element in the Hierophant in reverse relates to that kind of thing. In Hopes and Fears, we've got the Knight of Swords. This is a, 
an incisive, decisive uh, fighter for the underdog. This could be her wanting to get in first as well. So she's one of those five of wands people that appeared in Rudy Giuliani's um, environment, where I think that she and Rudy are probably, according to these readings so far, first out of the gate to do deals if they can. And then our final outcome is all of this worry and concern and negative thoughts. So I think that she also is sitting here below this harsh, harsh judgment. And she's very, very worried. She's really gotten herself sucked into a bad group. And her cards don't look good. But she also doesn't look strong. She looks like someone who would break pretty easily. 